Hi, I'm BJ Lisko. I'm Keith Doherty. We're Turbo Lovers. We're from Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> Our drummer uh, is not with us right now. He's uh, vacationing in Florida, that lucky bastard. He yeah. got out of this. <laughs> he got out of the winter for a while. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you if you really want to make music, like you're really you're just gonna find a way to do it, uh, pretty yeah. much no matter what. Like it's just something you kind you kind of have to do. It's like you it's know, just in you. You mm -hmm. just got to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll I'm gonna freak out. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely fucking freak out when we don't do music. I definitely freak out. <laughs> Any extended periods of time where we're not doing anything, uh, I'm usually crawling. You know, crawling up the walls. So yeah, it's a necessity. So Turbo Lovers originally started out as a recording project um, that I just did because I wanted to do like an arena rock sounding um, album uh, and I called it uh, Turbo Lover at the time just ba after the Juice Priest song um, and it was sort of like tongue in cheek like oh you know I didn't really have a name for anything so I just gotta yeah, just call it Turbo Lover and then it got reviewed by Classic Rock Magazine um, and it got a, a really good review and so then we're, we're, we're turbo lovers. Um, <laughs> we added an S to it, you know, to make it, you know, once the band started playing um, like live. Uh, but yeah, that's how we got, uh, and I don't want to say stuck with the name Turbo Lovers because I do like that record by Judas Priest and I like Judas Priest a lot. Um, the only time it's, uh, it, it's kind of rough is when you know, we were a tribute band. You're right. We open for tribute bands uh, sometimes. You know, we play with a GNR tribute band. We play with an ACDC tribute band. And when when you're called Turbo Lovers and you're playing with tribute bands, they think you're a Judas Priest tribute band. So that's that gets a little confusing. The other time it got real confusing was um, we played at uh, a number of times at Tim Ripper Owens, you know, the former singer of Judas Priest. Uh, he used to have a bar in Akron, and uh, we played there quite often. But I mean, we're called Turbo Lovers, and we're playing at the former singer of Judas Priest Bar. Um, so everybody there thought we were a Judas Priest cover band <laughs> uh, going into that. So we, we disappointed a lot of people. <laughs> not that that's not normal. <laughs> All right, well, our latest album is called Letting It Fly. I'm wearing the shirt right here. That's the cover. Um, probably done that. Yeah, we, uh, uh, not me, we work. We worked really hard on this one. Um, we had a producer for it, which is a first for us. Uh, Dave Pytech produced it, um, and yeah, I think we, I, I think we hit a level that we hadn't got with previous albums before. Um, as sort of cliche as that is to say, but he really did push us into uh, sort of really honing the songs and uh, really sort of honing the performances. What, what, do you, what do you think, he? Yeah, he did. Um, it was nice to have somebody different to kind of point us in some different directions and everything like that. Also, too, um, as much as I hate to say this, but COVID kind of helped us a little bit in this regard as far as we weren't able to play shows. So we kind of had to hone in on writing new stuff because it was the only thing that we could do. So that really helped us kind of write some new things and take some more time that normally we don't really have to do that when we're writing and you know playing shows and doing everything at the same time. But yeah, the album, if I didn't mention, is called Letting It Fly, um, and you can get it uh, at our Bandcamp, turbolovers.bandcamp.com, or you could download it from uh, the app, you know, Apple Music, the Apple Store. Um, pretty much yeah, anything that's anything, downloadable. Or you can stream it, download it from pretty much yeah, anywhere on the, uh, the internet's there. So yeah, please, uh, please go check it out. Well, you know, we're Turbo Lovers, so we write complicated <laughs> songs about complicated <laughs> things. <laughs> um, pretty much every song is either about drinking, rocking, dr rocking, <laughs> drinking, rocking, girls, if, girls, if it gets into your sex, if it gets into, uh, or maybe in a spaz. So it's one of, <laughs> that's pretty much like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think there's anything I didn't cover there. Like it's, it's not real deep is what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I try to be as clever as I can. I try to take as much inspiration from Bon Scott as I can and make the lyrics not you know, I, like, I don't want them to be, like, cringeworthy or anything like that. You know, I want them to, be, uh, 
yeah, I want them to have, you know, sort of a, sort of a flow and, and, and kind of a feel to them. But, but, but yeah, as far as like subject matter, like it's, it's just trying to write around that subject matter and, and making it as clever as we can. Yeah. We're not real theme oriented. <laughs> <laughs> Unless drinking is the theme. Right. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, album cover artwork here again, and I'll splice something in here. Uh, so that's actually the Youngstown City skyline um, behind it, and then sort of the the fading, you know, or the the the, the setting sun or, or or whatever, you know. I mean, I mean that goes back to the '80s, like Miami Vice day, you know. I mean, you've seen that image probably a lot. Um, so it's sort of a retro kind of throwback, and then uh, you know the eagle flying through, whatever, you know. I've uh, I've used that sort of imagery before a little bit, but you know that one's called Letting It Fly. That song particularly. Um, is well it's well it's just a filthy dirty song <laughs> um i'll let you use your imaginations out there it's called letting it fly um so uh yeah i mean if you listen to the lyrics of that at all uh but that's yeah that's the that's the you know we kind of wanted to combine all that and have a little bit of a sort of a nod to to youngstown in there too so that's the album cover the new darkness record is really good yeah, um, love that. Motor Hard is really good. Yeah. Uh, Massive Wagons last record was really good too. Um, I called House of Noise. L.A. Maybe. The L.A. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that one was called, but the uh, L.A. Maybe was a Dirty Tricks or something. Damn Dirty, Damn Dirty Damn Tricks. Damn Dirty Tricks, I believe. Yeah. The L.A. Maybe um, was a good one. Yeah. Um, um, Crazy Licks. We like Crazy Licks a lot. Crazy um, Licks is Tokyo Motor Fist is another yeah. one that's real good. Uh, they're they've had, they got two records and um, yeah, super melodic, super. super Me fun. personally, I'm a huge Royal Blood fan. That's kind of off the beaten path, but that's a different kind of sound that I really dig because the bass oriented. But uh, oh, uh, there's a band, uh, a melodic rock band called Houston that sounds just like Survivor that I like. I like a lot of AOR stuff, so that that was great. I mean, they literally yeah. sound like Jimmy Jameson. Fronted Survivor, like it's, uh, which is great since Jimmy Jameson's no longer with us. Right. Um, anything that's hooky and catchy, poppy, I mean, and we love any of that stuff, honestly. I mean, I started this band because there wasn't a band like this in Youngstown, Ohio, um, and there still isn't. Um, right. We're it, and, you know, just straight up rock and roll band, and there's, uh, there's some cool venues here. Um, Westside Bowl is a cool one. We, Laurel Oaks is sort of our uh, home away from home kind of watering hole uh, dive bar that we play a lot of the time. Um, Cedars has been around for a number of years. Um, so there's cool places to play. Um, but uh, as far as like the, the, the scene, it's it's really sort of all over the map. Like there's um, there's a lot of sort of uh, I don't know like more like heavier kind of rock yeah. like heavier stoner kind of rockish sort like of stuff indie stoner kind of stuff there's any stuff there's a lot of Americana stuff um there's a there's only a couple punk bands sort of like right and that's that's kind of it like yeah. and there's you know a lot of cover bands and stuff in the area but like nothing um I mean there's a lot of I, I'm, I'm downplaying this probably because there's a lot of bands here but there's not a lot of bands that we necessarily uh, fit with real real well here um but but yeah that's why we started yeah. this band so. like a lot of a lot of bands in this area i guess you'd call them niche i guess mm. sort of kind of um where we're just more like straightforward rock and roll which there's not a big scene for here um as but, far as like bands that do that but you know on, it, the, on the plus side it helps us get shows in, yeah. in pittsburgh all the time because anybody that comes through that's uh 80s rock, whatever. There's or not even, a lot of bands that sound like us, so we yeah, can get Yeah, even everywhere now. Like, yeah, Akron, every, but we're, the more we kind of get out there and do things like this, the more people hear us and, you know, we get better shows because we are one of the only rock bands around here. Yeah, so, and the class by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am just going to keep playing shows. We got, uh, a number of cool shows coming up this year. Um, we're opening for Ace Freely. We're opening for Living Color. We're opening for a band called The Lucid, which is David Elson from Megadeth's uh, new band. Um, yeah, I mean, just just yeah. shows. We're just going to play shows in support of the new record. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, just eventually, probably next year, we'll repeat the cycle and start writing for yeah. writing for a new one. So. That's kind of what we do. We just kind of 
create and then play the shit out of it and then start to create again. <laughs> That's it. You're a rock band. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's that exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much the MO right there. <laughs> I know, metal's fun. I, uh, I, I, we're not metal, I wouldn't say. Yeah. I mean, we got there's metal elements there's that we metal, do. Yeah, there's metal stuff we do and we all grew up listening to metal, you know, amongst other things. But, like, I don't know if we're metal, like, you know, metal. We're just a rock and roll band, yeah. but but yeah, there's 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 definitely metal uh, metal spots. There's certain songs mm -hmm. that are that lean more on the metal side or that are heavier. Uh, but no, I mean I think metal rules just because it's it's just fun. It's sort of a community too. I mean you can sure. you see anybody you're like oh that guy's a metal head, and then yeah. you're gonna you know you end up you hit it off. You you can talk to just total strangers. Like I've gone like last year or well not last year Jesus the last time Metallica came through. Oh, yeah. uh, I went by myself to the show and just hung out and you know and just made friends because you're in a you're in a Metallica concert together, um, you know, and that happens at at any metal show. That happens at local metal shows, like you know anything uh, it, it, and everything sort of in between. So yeah, it, it's it's yeah. a cool community. You know, you 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 sort of can spot your own. You know, <laughs> and it doesn't even matter like if it's Judas Priest or if it's Testament or you know whatever it is. It's kind of like if you're at a metal show. Everybody's cool, you know. What I, I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah, so that's why metal rules. Metalrules.com. Metal rules. Metal rules. <laughs>